Hello, good evening, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. I'm reading Evening Prayer for Epiphany Season from the Church of England's Common Worship. You'll find the words in the book, Common Worship Daily Prayer, in the Season section, Evening Prayer, Epiphany Season. Also online at the Church's website, Aremus Daily Prayer, and downloadable as apps for Apple or Android devices. If you are following in the book, you might like to look up 12th of January, halfway through, amongst the Saints' Days and Festivals, because it's the Lesser Festival of Aylred, also Benedict Biscop commemoration of, but we're focusing on Ale Red today. Uh, you'll find the uh, options including possibly a slightly different refrain for the Magnificat or Song of Mary when we get there, for example, and the collect specific to Ale Red. I should be reading something, something from Kindle edition of Celebrating the Saints presently. Uh, I think it was actually a modern translation of something he's actually written himself, which is always uh, very moving. <coughs> You're welcome to join me in the building, uh, Tuesday to Saturday, 8 and 6, morning and evening prayer, or by Zoom, code on the Bride Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook, and it stays there as a video for you to watch for a month, thereabouts, and the audio will be on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel presently, and I should be doing a couple of TikTok videos uh, in a moment. Do check out that channel too if you're interested. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your glory is proclaimed in all the world. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. You gave your Christ as light to the nations, and through the anointing of the Spirit, you established us as a royal priesthood. As you call us into your marvellous light, may our lives bear witness to your truth, and our lips never cease to proclaim your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The J.S.B. Monsal Hymn, O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, bow down before him his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of lowliness, kneel and adore him, the Lord is his name. Low at his feet lay thy burden of carefulness, high on his heart he will bear it for thee. Comfort thy sorrows and answer thy prayerfulness, guiding thy steps as may best for thee be. Fear not to enter his courts in the slenderness, of the poor wealth thou wouldst reckon as thine. Truth in its beauty and love in its tenderness, these are the offerings to lay on his shrine. These day we bring them in trembling and fearfulness. He will accept for the name that is dear. Mornings of joy give for evenings of tearfulness. Trust for our trembling and hope for our fear. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Bow down before him his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of lowliness. Kneel and adore him, the Lord is his name. (coughs) That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalmody is number 68 this evening. You'll find the salt at the back of the book. Psalm 68. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those that hate him flee before him. As the smoke vanishes, so they so may they vanish away. As wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them make merry with gladness. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides on the clouds. The Lord is his name, rejoice before him. Father of the fatherless, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners to songs of welcome but the rebellious inhabit a burning desert. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the heavens dropped down rain, at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent down a gracious rain, O God, 
you refreshed your inheritance when it was weary. Your people came to dwell there. In your goodness, O God, you provide for the poor. <coughs> the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of women who bore the tidings. Kings and their armies, they flee, they flee. And women at home are dividing the spoil. Though you stayed among the sheepfolds, see now a dove's wings covered with silver and its feathers with green gold. When the mighty scattered the kings, it was like snowflakes falling on Zaman. You mighty mountain, great mountain of Bashan, you towering mountain, great mountain of Bashan, why look with envy you towering mountains at the mount which God has desired for his dwelling, the place where the Lord will dwell for ever? The chariots of God are twice ten thousand, even thousands upon thousands. The Lord is among them, the Lord of Sinai in holy power. You have gone up on high and led captivity captive. You have received tribute even from those who rebelled, that you may reign as Lord and God. Blessed be the Lord who bears our burdens day by day, for God is our salvation. God is for us the God of our salvation. God is the Lord who can deliver from death. God will smite the head of his enemies, the hairy scalp of those who walk in wickedness. The Lord has said from the heights of Bashan, from the depths of the sea will I bring them back, till I dip your foot in blood, and the tongue of your dogs has a taste of your enemies. <coughs> we see your solemn processions, O God, your processions into the sanctuary, my God and my King. The singers go before, the musicians follow after, in the midst of maidens playing on timbrels. In your companies bless your God, bless the Lord you that are the fount of Israel. At the head there is Benjamin, least of the tribes, the princes of Judah in joyful company, the princes of Zebulun and Naphtali. Send forth your strength, O God. Establish, O God, what you have wrought in us. For your temple's sake in the Jerusalem, kings shall break, bring their gifts to you. Drive back with your word the wild beasts of the reeds, the herd of the bull-like, the brutish hordes. Trample down those who lust after silver. Scatter the peoples that delight in war. Vessels of bronze shall be brought from Egypt. Ethiopia will stretch out her hands to God. Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth, make music in praise of the Lord. He rides on the ancient heaven of heavens, and sends forth his voice, a mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose splendour is over Israel, whose power is above the clouds. How terrible is God in his holy sanctuary, the God of Israel who gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Going past our first reading to the Song of Praise, turning back in evening prayer, in the uh, book to evening prayer, Epiphany Season. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise for ever. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you have created all things, and by your will they have their being. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for God's saints from every tribe and language and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests, serving our God. They will reign with you on earth. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise for ever. Reading from the pastoral prayers of Aelred of Rivo. A special prayer for wisdom. These things my hope I need for my own sake, but there are others that I need not only for myself, but for the sake of those to whom you bid me be a power for good, rather than merely a superior. There was a wise king once who asked that wisdom might be given him to rule your people. His prayer found favour in your eyes. You did hearken thereto. <coughs> and at that time you had not met the cross, nor shown your people that amazing love. But now, sweet Lord, behold before your face your own peculiar people, whose eyes are ever on your cross, and who themselves are signed with it. You have entrusted to your sinful servant the task of ruling them. My God, you know what a fool I am. My weakness is not hidden from your sight. Therefore, sweet Lord, I ask you not for gold, I ask you not for silver, nor for jewels, but only that you would give me wisdom, that I may know to rule your people well. O fount of wisdom, send her from your throne of might, to be with me, to work with me, to act in me, to speak in me, to order all my thoughts and words and deeds and plans, according to your will and to the glory of your name, to further their advance and my salvation. Amen. 
Amos 5, 1 to 17, our first Bible reading, save what we use liturgically and uh, the Psalms already. Amos 5, Amos is a minor prophet in the prophecy section of the Hebrew Scriptures. If you've got a Holy Bible with both covenants in it in front of you, turn to halfway through, that's the Psalms and Proverbs, the wisdom stuff. Move towards the back and after Isaiah, Jeremiah and the like, you should come across Amos. Um, flip through carefully, do use an index if it doesn't fall open for you and you'll find yourselves in, you find yourselves in the Christian Second Covenant, um, before you've come across it, Amos, we're looking at the book of Amos, and within Amos chapter 5, large number in the margin, ahead of the paragraph, chapter 5, Amos chapter 5, and verses 1 to 17, the verse numbers are the small numbers in the text, as you may have guessed, Amos 5, 1 to 17, scroll back to it from the canticle, if you're following electronically. Hear this word that I take up over you in lamentation, O house of Israel, fallen no more to rise, is made in Israel, forsaken on her land, with no one to raise her up. For thus says the Lord God, the city has marched out a thousand, shall have a hundred left, and that which marched out a hundred shall have ten left. For thus says the Lord to the house of Israel, seek me and live, but do not seek Bethel, do not enter into Gilgal, or cross over to Beersheba, for Gilgal shall surely go into exile, and Bethel shall come to nothing. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Are you that to turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground? The one who made the Pleiades and Orion and turns deep darkness into the morning, and darkens the day into night, and calls for the waters of the sea, and pours them out on the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name, who makes destruction flash out against the strong, so that destruction comes upon the fortress. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, that you shall, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine, for you know how many are your transgressions, and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good, not evil, that you may live, and say the Lord the God of hosts will be with you. Just as you have said, hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. Therefore thus says the Lord the God of hosts, The Lord in all the squares there shall be waiting, wailing, and in all the streets they shall say, Alas, alas. They shall call the farmers to mourning, those skilled in lamentation to wailing, in all the vineyards there shall be wailing, for I will pass through the midst of you, says the Lord. <coughs> so the writers who are presenting their case under the name of Amos here are writing as believers, to believers, believing Jews, to believing Jews, or at least half believing Jews, as the audience and uh, the pious writers are wanting the... Um, non-practising audience to be restored to a fully thriving, supporting, empowering, enabling faith. And they're writing that if you trust in your own power, your own army, <coughs> if you send out a thousand from your city, you'll only get a hundred back. The reason why God is uh, the one that makes the stars and uh, causes day and night draws water into the heavens and rains it back down on earth again. This is the power of the God we're dealing with here. The reason why this God is going to do bad stuff to you is because you've trampled on the poor. You've built houses. You afflict the righteous and take a bribe. Just extraordinary how contemporary this sounds, given that it was written so many thousands of years ago, just like yesterday's reading. <coughs> And the writers say, seek good and not evil, that you may live. It's not even calling people to worship. It's calling people to live right. I don't know quite which comes first, whether worship then leads to good living or good living leads to worship. But um, Amos calls us, as his hearers today, to both proper worship and proper life, as well as proper devotion and study. Uh, life, I mean by life, I mean service and uh, living right as well as worshipping right and learning and studying, growing, developing our, our experience and understanding. And if we don't do that, um, then there will be wailing in the streets. Farmers then, as uh, perhaps now, have times when they're overly busy and times when they're not so much. So in England, they would be doing their hedge laying and their ditching at this time of year um, after they could over the harvests. And there, there are multiple harvests in the Middle East, as uh, we may know even today. <coughs> But uh, in between times, the planting and the harvesting, obviously in the days of Amos, farmers were, had a second uh, income 
by being professional mourners and uh, they must suggest they need to be hired and called because what God does will cause maximum grief. And in our own day, we are headed, it seems to me, to grief as the uh, UK and US have broadened the um, Middle Eastern conflict by bombing Yemen uh, because it's it endeavoured to prevent um, ships coming and going that might be supporting Israel in their view. And of course, the UK and uh, the US uh, are particularly strong in supporting the Israel. Uh, however, many or few um, UK and United States citizens agree with that policy. That's uh, how internationally we are being uh, represented. And uh, it just seems very relevant. The Amos writings just seem very relevant to that and other situations of our own day. So to our second reading, 1 Corinthians 4, scrolling on to it if we're following electronically, you'll find it after the canticle. If you're following the Bible, uh, we're now in the Christian scriptures. After Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, you'll find Acts and Romans, and after that, the 1st, 2nd, 3rd Corinthians. We're in the first book of Corinthians, about halfway through the last third, if that makes sense, of the Bible. 1 Corinthians, and within 1 Corinthians, so that's number one in the title of the book, 1 Corinthians, then we're looking for chapter 4, and that's the number in the margin, the head of the paragraph there, chapter 4. No verses this time because we're reading the whole jolly lot. Think of us in this way as servants of Christ and stewards of God's mysteries. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they should be found trustworthy. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any human court. I do not even judge myself. I am not aware of anything against me, but I am not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, do not pronounce judgment before time. Before the Lord comes, who will bring to light things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Then each one will receive commendation from God. I have applied all this to Paulus and myself for your benefit, brothers and sisters, so that you may learn through us the meaning of the saying, nothing beyond what is written, so that none of you will be puffed up in favour of one against another. For who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you received it, why do you boast as if it were not a gift? Already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. Quite apart from us, you have become kings. Indeed, I wish that you had become kings so that we might be kings with you. For I think that God has exhibited us apostles as last of all, <coughs> as they sentenced to death, because we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels and to mortals. We are fools for the sake of Christ, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honour, but we in disrepute. For the present hour, we are hungry and thirsty. We are poorly clothed and beaten and homeless, and we grow weary from the work of our own hands. When reviled, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we speak kindly. We've become like the rubbish of the world, the dregs of all things to this very day. I'm not writing this to make you feel ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children. For though you might have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. Indeed, in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. I appeal to you then, be imitators of me. For this reason, I sent you Timothy, who is my beloved and faithful child in the Lord, to remind you of my ways in Christ Jesus, as I teach them everywhere in every church. But some of you, thinking that I am not coming to you, have become arrogant. But I will come to you soon, if the Lord wills. And I will find out not the talk of these arrogant people, but their power. For the kingdom of God depends not on talk, but on power. What would you prefer? Am I to come to you with a stick or with love in a spirit of gentleness? So this is not atypical of Paul somewhat getting his knickers in a twist, getting bothered and uh, blathering, and uh, sounding quite sort of holy from time to time and quite uh, grumpy. In other times, the opening paragraph talks about people who are stewards of God's mysteries, needing to be trustworthy, of course. But he said we'll only find out in the end who's trustworthy uh, when God judges. And God's judgment isn't the same as a uh, crown court king's council who... Uh, finds guilty and then sentences. It's much more like an advocate or a solicitor working on our behalf, possibly in a lower court. And uh, this is continuing on from yesterday's reading where Paul travels and sets up church and people come in after and uh, help out or otherwise. And there are obviously some in the church in Corinth who reckon that Apollos um, is much better and doing things totally different to Paul. Paul is trying to say, well, we're all under Jesus, actually. He's the true foundation. And uh, 
we shouldn't, we, you shouldn't be judging me, I don't judge myself, you shouldn't be judging me and holding me up against the polis or a polis up against me. We should be just uh, getting on with it. Um, then there's this slightly odd business about kings and fools. I don't know uh, whether they thought themselves as kings or having uh, <coughs> privilege and whether they thought of him as a fool. <coughs> but he clearly places the apostles as fools rather than those of privilege. Um, if you're, I don't know, the upper classes perhaps. He even says it would be good if you were um, privileged because then uh, I could be privileged with you. But he makes the case at the bottom of that paragraph that however badly he is treated, he uses the we there, um, that uh, he as an apostle respond posit positively to any negativity that they attract. And then he concludes, this is where he becomes a little bit petulant, um, people seem to have moved away from what I suggested, how the way I suggested you should be, and from my teaching, so I sent you Timothy, so... Um, we can read of uh, Paul's letters to Timothy, um, follow on from the 1st, 2nd and 3rd Corinthians in the Holy Bible. And uh, that just shows how tricky it must have been for Timothy as an elder. It makes me think of uh, being a minister in a multi-parish benefice today where we're often reminded of either others alongside whom we work and how much better than us they are or um, how people before us have been so much better than us or worse or whatever. It's the same sort of challenge we've got different roles and different jobs <coughs> either because times have changed but uh, yes Paul is saying here th throughout the whole of our reading this evening to be wary of judgment to recognize our shortcomings our weakness our foolishness the primacy of God and of Jesus and the church and uh, to not make trouble for ourselves by making judgments and uh, thereby being subject to judgment ourselves. He says he's going to have to turn up Does he uh, and sort them out a bit like a parent or teacher sort of going to the back of the class or to the children's playroom or whatever to find out what all the trouble is about. Am I going to have to come and tell you off or are we still going to be able to go out and have our ice cream, whatever, have our treat later on? It's your choice. And uh, so it is for us, our leaders. Uh, we need to treat our leaders with respect because sooner or later they or another will come and uh, find us out and we might be punished or rewarded. But uh, we should recognise that we're not beyond the reach of that uh, authority and um, accountability. So to the responsory back in evening prayer, during Epiphany season. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. God's salvation has been openly shown to all people. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. The Song of Mary. You have left all things and followed me. You will be rewarded a hundred times over and gain eternal life. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have left all things and followed me. You will be rewarded a hundred times over and gain eternal life. Saviour sacrifice, seal three in one, one in three. We come to you at the end of this day, and we thank you for those moments where that great covenant and that great... Uh, transaction that great exchange that you made on our behalf has been fulfilled where we caught glimpses of heaven in our own gifts and abilities <coughs> our own fullness of life people recognizing in us the people that you've made us to be where we felt fulfilled and satisfied and grateful for those skills and talents the place we are the job that we have the people that we're in relationship with at home or at work the children etc our health that we have 
in our ambit, in our life experience. We thank you for all that is good and encouraging and that we have experienced today. We also, however, look back over the day and note that there have been times and difficulties and challenges where we felt excluded, not the people we called to be, uh, aside and apart from you, not being aware of your presence, though it is there all the time, of course, anyway, where we've made mistakes, been let down, where people have accused us, where we've had bad news, where we've struggled with pain and addiction, health matters. And if that's been our experience, we come to you for your healing, your provision, your protection, your release. So to Release International, we pray for Nasir and Tan Tasneem, who work for Release International, partner overseeing a radio ministry that broadcasts hundreds of gospel-centred programmes into Afghanistan. <coughs> we pray that project is helpful to those who believe in that land and doesn't uh, put them at risk. We pray for the Church of Scotland, one of Christian Aid's sponsoring churches. May they thrive and prosper and continue to be able to fulfil their role of engaging with your mission and ministry in the world in that place. Church of England's prayers for the Holy Land includes the lines, God of compassion and justice, we cry out to you for those who cannot see anything but rage and violence, that you would surprise them with mercy and turn their hearts towards kindness for their fellow human beings. The Joint Public Issues Team prayer for Ukraine includes the lines, Here yeah, our longing that leaders and nations will honour the worth of all people by having the courage to resolve conflict through dialogue. As we turn to Suffolk Diocese, we pray for our bishops, Martin and Mike, our rural dean, Josh, and Archdeacon Rich. We pray your blessings on them, <coughs> 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 that they might know your support and encouragement and uh, collegial respect from other ministers and be encouraged and inspired uh, through the respect also of those uh, congregations and uh, believers whom they support and sustain. Let me pray for Jenny, who's the lead clergy person at Wickham Market with Pettis Tree. And we pray for other ministers with whom she works there and their uh, church warden, treasurer and secretaries and the communities as they interact each with the other. We pray that you will grow faith, belief, church, activity, conscience, honour uh, in those communities as a result of your presence there in your church and all that it does. We pray for theological colleges and courses <coughs> in the county and those to which people from the county hire to um, learn more about um, what it means to be uh, ministers for their formation of self and understanding and attitude and service. And we pray that they will be uh, find themselves to be financially secure and that they'll be able to attract um, worthwhile, learned, wise lecturers to develop, build and grow what the church is about based on its traditions, on its scripture and its reason and revelation therein. We pray for Ananiah, who is a tutor at KCTC, which is uh, obviously some sort of training establishment in Kagera Diocese, which is Alink Diocese in North East Africa. <coughs> May he be inspired as he sees you working through him, assuming it's a him. Pray for the businesses and people in Linstead Road, Cookley Street, Mary's Lane in the village of Cookley here. Also Low Road, Clayhill, Barrows Hill, Heveringham Road, Church Road, Hellsworth Road, Heveringham, Long Road, the street in Heveringham. Hunting Fields, Brick Kiln Lane, Barrows Hill Street, Laundry Lane, Bridge Street, Linstead Road, Craftfield Road, and in Walpole, Hellswood Road, Banfield Road, Pearson Hall Road, Cookley Street, Cookley Road, the Clink and Eve Place, and Church Hill. We pray for the people in those addresses whom life is going well. May they turn to you with thanksgiving, be supportive of the church in uh, word and deed. <coughs> we pray they'll also be helpful and supportive within their communities, giving their time and talents to promote and sustain the uh, community in those villages. And we pray for people in those villages whom life is difficult at the moment. We pray they might turn to you with um, pleading and that you might answer that with a real and certain experience of faith, but also practical reaction and response as you work through neighbours and agencies to uh, answer those pleas. We pray for businesses based in or serving those addresses that they will thrive and prosper, especially farmers 
and uh, but there's a holiday, holiday industry <coughs> as they put in place what they hope now will be fruitful at the end of the year that they'll be able to balance their books and uh, from our perspective continue to be able to provide good jobs and services making their contribution to the local economy let me ask your blessing peter and janet jonathan jean felicity rachel francis helen joan henry jenny john morris cynthia giving thanks for um, david's recovery and uh, janet's after having a dip <coughs> Also, uh, Malcolm, we pray that you'll make a way where there is no way for these for whom we pray. And we pray for those who walk with them, they will have the care and support that they need in their turn. We thank you for all that's good in the lives of David, Malcolm, Hilda, Bob, Ron, Trevor, Norman, Alan, Mary and all others who have recently died, including those who have died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, neglect, accident, and those that have taken their own lives. Pray for those we've known and loved and see no longer, those who have served you faithfully here, and all whose years mind falls at this time. Rest is home. Grant of them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. We pray for ourselves and all who mourn the loss of a loved one or a change in life chances. Pray that you will be for us the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Yakutamhe <laughs> Chehut <laughs> Almighty God, who endowed Aylred the Abbot with the gift of Christian friendship and the wisdom to lead others in the way of holiness, grant to your people that same spirit of mutual affection, so that in loving one another we may know the love of Christ and rejoice in the eternal possession of your supreme goodness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Believing the promises of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bye to those joining us on YouTube.